Hello, hello everybody. How are you doing today? Welcome back to Lloyd's Everyday English. The news with Lloyd today, if you're watching live. Happy Friday to you, wherever you're watching from in the world. And let me know in the comments, where are you watching from? As you can see, I'm <laughs> currently in a very hot place. I can put the fan on, but it's just a little bit loud. Hopefully that's not too loud. Let me put on a lighter uh, setting. Hopefully not too loud. Welcome, everybody. So what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be looking at seven really important mistakes that I think many of us, if not all of us, are making, at least some of them, which are stopping you from having a perfect, lovely, restful night's sleep, which, as we know, is very, very important. Sleep equals better sleep equals better life, right? More productivity and all that. So we're going to get into that in a moment. But if you've never seen me before, my name, as I've said, and as you can probably guess, is Lloyd. I'm one of the teachers and founders of English TV Live. So English TV Live is a private community that we have um, where you can take your English to the next level. Live lessons every day, group speaking classes, and much more. Many opportunities for you to practice your English daily, get feedback from myself and our other teachers. I think you will really enjoy it. Um, EnglishTVLive.com, EnglishTVLive.com, bit of a long name, um, to find out more. And, of course, if you are new to this YouTube channel, give it a like and subscribe and all that stuff. I'm asking you to do many things, but if you can just like this video, just like the video, just like it, just like it. That really does make a big difference for YouTube to show my videos to more people. Just take one second. Come on, I'll wait. I will wait for you to click that like button. Okay, let me see. Have you clicked it? I'm checking the like button now. The thumbs up button. Come on, just click the thumbs up button. All right, anyway. <laughs> Uh, great to see you all, everybody. And so, uh, yeah, let's get into it, shall we? So I've chosen an article uh, which, as I've mentioned, talks about different um, things, mistakes that you might be making. And But more importantly, of course, it's interesting to find this out. But even more importantly, it, more important is that this article is jam-packed. Jam-packed, right, means it's full of lots and lots of useful vocabulary. Uh, so when I found this article, I thought, wow, this is a perfect one to look at today because it has so much useful vocabulary, which we are going to go through, of course. Now, without, let me just say hello to a few people quickly. I'm just a little bit blurry here now. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, let me say hello to Lolly Lolly. Hello, hello, welcome. Eugenia, very nice to see you. Mohammed, how you doing, buddy? Let me just make the comments a bit bigger. And who else do we have? We have Trudy, welcome. And everybody else, good to see you. So let's get into this article here. And um, I will leave the article for you in the comments and I'll leave it in the description of this video as well afterwards so you can check it out yourself but it's on uh, the the Sun the Sun website the Sun's website the Sun is a newspaper in England well, in the United in the UK and it's a very famous one but this is a tabloid newspaper tabloid I think I'll write that down in the comments as well so we have uh, two main types of newspapers, right? We have a broadsheet, I'll write that down as well, and we have tabloid. Tabloid is more casual, right? Uses more slang, more casual writing, and um, also the, the stories that they have often are more sensational, more stuff about celebrities, different things like that. But they do have interesting articles as well. And one thing I do like about tabloids is that they, they often uh, communicate in a more conversational way. The articles are, are written more in a way that people actually talk, which so it has more useful vocabulary often, I would say. Anyway, 
Let's take a look at this one. What is the headline for this article? Snore off. Well, and you see this quite a lot in tabloid articles. They they have these puns, right? Or they create kind of new words. In this case, uh, I think, I'm think i pretty sure this is a new phrasal verb they've just created for this article. Snore off. Okay. There is a phrasal verb which uh, which is bore, bore off. Uh, you can check it. We'll check it out here. So to bore off um, means basically like, uh, okay, I can't find it there. But to bore off is like basically go away, you know, leave me alone. You're being, you're boring me, bore off. But in this case, snore off. Um, I'm not sure. Ex yeah, I'm not sure exactly what what the what the writer means here with snore off. Uh, also, you could have something off, like a face off. You know, like a fight with somebody, so maybe it's a sleeping fight. I'm really not sure what the right thing is. It doesn't matter that. The important thing is here. Seven mistakes you make before going to bed, which are stopping you sleeping. And let me know in the comments, um, before we get into this article, actually, I would be curious to, to hear if you can uh, predict any of these mistakes. Or maybe you can let us know let me know what are some things that you know that you shouldn't do that uh, prevent you from sleeping well uh, in my case i would say um uh, spending spending time on electronic devices before going to sleep um, is not so good i'm sure many of us do that right uh, we end up going to sleep later because uh, because we are because we we're, we're glued you know on our phones or watching something and then you wake up later in the morning like oh why did I stay up to watch this ridiculous video or whatever it was right and also I think it's not good to stimulate your mind so much before you go to sleep with videos and and electronics and lights and all this stuff it's better to slowly uh, give your mind time to relax and, and, and ease into sleep. So that would probably be my one, my fir the first one that comes to mind. But let me know about you, what about you before we look at this article. Lolly Lolly says, uh, going to bed after midnight. Okay, going to bed after midnight is one. Definitely, yeah. I mean, think about the name, right? Midnight. Why was it called midnight? That's because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be the middle of the night. Um, sorry, I just want to fix, if you just give me one second, I just want to fix my camera here. It's just annoying me. Just give me two seconds. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, just bear with me. It's just out of, just out of focus, but we will be back in two seconds. There we go. That's better. Uh, what else? Uh, Trudy says, watching your phone just before sleeping. That's right. I would rather say looking at your phone or scrolling your phone. Uh, if you say watching your phone, it sounds a little bit strange. You are watching a video, right? Uh, uh, but you you could say I'm watch, watching videos on my phone. But... Uh, Watching your phone, I mean, that gives you the idea that the phone is just there. You're like just looking at it and there's nothing on the screen, you know? So looking at your phone, scrolling your phone, something like that. Using your phone, as Muhammad says as well. Seems like everybody is guilty of the same thing. Uh, Lolly Lolly says, watching a horror film before going to bed. Oh dear, that's not, <laughs> that is not a good idea. That is a very bad idea indeed. Well, let's take a look at these ones in this article, shall we? Because I think they're pretty interesting. <clears throat> so let's, I'm going to read the article and we're going to, as we go along um, uh, during each paragraph, I will uh, break down some of the vocabulary. So let's read the first part here and I'll try and, uh, not try, but I will highlight the words as we go along as well. Let me just try and get it, fit it nicely into the screen there. That should be good. Waking up feeling refreshed and rejuvenated is something we all want. 
There is nothing worse than night filled with interrupted sleep and your alarm clock going off as soon as you've drifted off. So already we have some really useful vocabulary. So waking up, when you wake up in the morning feeling refreshed, right? So that's pretty obvious. Feeling fresh, you've had a good night's sleep, you feel refreshed, rejuvenated. It's a very similar word to refreshed. Uh, rejuvenated basically means you are full of energy again, right? Maybe you you uh, you were tired, you were lacking energy, but then you get some rest or something like that. You get this boost of energy again. And you are rejuvenated. Now, it doesn't only have to be from a night's sleep. You could be rejuvenated if um, maybe you take a holiday and then you come back from your holiday and you are feeling rejuvenated. Maybe before the holiday you were very burned out and you were not very motivated, but you come back and I'm rejuvenated. I'm ready to get back to <laughs> whatever you were doing, get back to your business or your work, whatever, your regular life. You could feel rejuvenated maybe if you take a very nice uh cold shower, maybe not nice, but a cold shower, right? Maybe you didn't have much energy and then you take a cold shower, or maybe you even, I guess you could even drink a coffee and oh, I feel rejuvenated. I'm ready to go. So something that gives you that bolt of energy to, uh, to, to restart again. Very nice word, rejuvenated. So it's for your feeling. I wouldn't use it for anything else except for a person. A person feels rejuvenated. Can I say that? Mm, can I use it for something else? Maybe this computer's rejuvenated. I'd say it for a person. And um, mm, 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 another one here, drift off, okay? So, has have you ever had this experience before? You, uh, you, you are struggling to fall asleep, and then finally, finally you fall asleep. Maybe you fall asleep, uh, I don't know, <laughs> just before the break of dawn in the morning, you wake up, and almost immediately you, you wake up, your alarm goes off and you've slept only a short amount of time. Not a very nice feeling for sure. So you want to uh, get to sleep earlier. Yeah, you uh, drift off is the, the verb to look at here. Then the phrasal verb to drift off is basically falling asleep. OK, drift off to drift means to move slowly in a direction drift imagine that there is um uh what could there be a boat okay a boat on the water just by itself it will naturally drift away or anything on the water or maybe something in uh in the wind is drifting in the wind maybe like a bag a paper bag or something a plastic bag drifting in the wind a balloon so something drifts it moves also you can drift um uh if you are just not you're moving in no specific direction you're drifting around now if you're drifting around in life that's really that has that gives the impression that you have no direction in your life so it's not really the best thing you could say i'm just drifting along in life sounds like you are not in control but drift off refers to falling asleep so you know and actually a few, about a few hours ago i was getting pretty sleepy myself i didn't get ironically i didn't get enough sleep i don't think last night so i was kind of drifting off a little bit or actually you can also say nodding off is another way to say nod you know nod like you nod your head and nodding off is another way to say this. So I'll write that down as well in the comments. Let me just check your comments here. Uh, Mohammed says, I drift in my thoughts. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Eugenia says, today I drifted off on a bus. You have to be, care yeah, have to be careful with that. I think that's a very common place to, to drift off on the bus, on the train, but uh, you might wake up and you're way past your stop already. Eugenia says, I feel rejuvenated after taking supplements. Very nice example. Um, 
And Trudy says, eating a lot before going to bed is also not a good idea. That is true. And uh, very, there's, this lady's just drifted off, I think. Um, little uh, subheading for this photo here. It says, waking up and feeling refreshed is important to be able to have a productive day. And here are some tips to help get a better, better night's sleep. Okay, let's come back to the article now. However, there are many mistakes which make people before they sleep. Oh, sorry, <laughs> let me read that again. Okay, however, there are many mistakes which people make before they sleep, which prevent us from, from waking up feeling fresh faced. Okay, so fresh faced is kind of similar to refreshed, but uh, in this case, if you're fresh faced, that means that, um, you know, well, I think you can probably guess what that means, but you you look fresh in your in your face. Your face maybe you don't have uh, you don't have any dark circles under your eyes, bags under your eyes. You your your skin because it's very important, right? Sleep is very important for your skin, and yeah, reju rejuvenating your whole body. And so you feel you look fresh faced. You you look uh, healthier. You look happier and more vibrant. But these mistakes could prevent us from from uh, from getting that fresh face. So uh, let's just read this one here. Uh, it is essential to get six to nine hours of sleep each night to be productive the next day. Let me know in the comments what is your average amount of sleep these days. I mean, six still is a little bit low, but I guess it depends on the person. Maybe for some people, six is okay. And I've heard as well that if you sleep too much, it can also be bad. I would say a happy medium is probably seven to eight hours from what I've heard. But again, it's not its not a one-size-fits-all thing. Everybody is a little bit different, right? So here uh, in this article, the founder of um, so Lean Greens, Lean, if you're lean, that means you're in good shape. Um, lean your your body is in good shape you're you're lean you're not overweight and you're you know you have some nice muscles etc tim goodwin is the guy uh, the the founder of that company uh, so this company they um greens is, relates to vegetables lean greens we can check out their website if you want uh, lean greens is a um company which I think they produce um, they produce vegetable juice I think something along those lines or they provide you with the ingredients to to juice your vegetables which is very healthy apparently juicing your vegetables so she has the seven mistakes you didn't know you've been making before you go to sleep. So let's get to the first one here. And the first mistake for today, geez, some very strange pictures here. Um, <laughs> over napping. Mm -hmm. So over napping, that's when you do too much of something, right? Overworking, oversleeping, over napping. Well, oversleeping actually would mean you sleep late. But over napping, now, a nap might seem vital to get you through the, your day, but overdoing it can impact your ability to sleep through during the night. Okay. Um, I think we all enjoy a nap every now and then, but the problem is a nap is effective if it's short. So it should, according to this article, it should be 20 minutes, but not longer. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. So try and stick to 20 minute naps as anything longer can leave you feeling groggy. Look at that word in a moment. The timing and location can play an important role too. Um, napping after 3 p.m. can interfere with your evening sleep. Probably a little bit too late, right? 3 p.m. Uh, with your evening sleep and a loud bright room will cause interruptions so the main word I want to look at from this paragraph is 
groggy okay groggy now this word here groggy refers to that feeling when um you are how would i describe this you're feeling you're not you're not feeling clear right you're feeling maybe a little bit dizzy a little bit uh not quite awake you're not sure exactly what's going on you don't feel so good um we could look maybe for a definition uh, of groggy but you know when you wake up morning you get up and maybe you have not slept enough and you're kind of uh yeah you're weak da dazed unsteady now it can be from illness as well if you have the flu you might be very feeling very groggy maybe you have a little bit of a headache as well um, if you have a hangover uh, from drinking too much the night before you can say i feel a bit groggy uh, not enough sleep or a blow which means a, a punch so if somebody uh gets into a fight or gets punched they probably feel a bit groggy after that you know when you see a boxing match and um the one fighter boxer gets knocked to the ground and he's like what's going on what's happening he's very groggy in that case or if um if somebody is given a drug right maybe somebody puts a drug in your drink not very good but if that happened then maybe you'd be like whoa what's going on where am i groggy okay so this next one is food in bed eating in bed apparently is very bad for your sleep let's find out why making a habit of eating in bed can negatively impact your sleep it ultimately confuses your brain and blurs the line between sleep and non-sleep so one very interesting pattern uh, with many of these mistakes is your brain can easily get confused about different things so we have to try and make it clear for our brain this is sleeping time or this is uh, this is non-sleeping time um, otherwise it can blur the line between sleep and non-sleep so your brain can be confused is this sleeping time or is it not so if you are eating in bed and i know we all from time to time enjoy having some snacks some some food in the in the bed maybe um but um there's a few problems with this right so one is that your brain is think if if you're eating your brain does not does not associate that place with sleeping they should be two separate things it's kind of like i don't know if you ever have ever tried to work in bed uh, i do from time to from time to time but it's it's difficult and uh, i find whenever i try to do some work maybe lying on the bed it's not as effective as sitting at a desk because your mind is kind of confused is this sleeping time or is this working time and it's the same with food as well apparently so blurring the lines there's a line there should be a division between two things but if it's not clear then you could say it blurs the lines so uh, we could say for example um, if you are best friends with your boss it kind of blurs the line between uh, work and um, friendship and that can be good but it can also not be so good and also a nice expression here to make a habit of something or make a habit out of something you can say as well so this basically means that you well i mean it's pretty clear but to to start a habit something becomes a habit so you make a habit out of something this can be good or bad you can make a habit out of eating vegetables every day or drinking a lot of water but you can also make a habit of getting to work late or going to sleep late so making a habit out of something is a fixed expression when you are telling somebody you could uh, uh maybe giving somebody uh, a warning you could say hey don't make a habit out of this okay i know you were late for work maybe the boss is saying this i know you're late today but don't make a habit out of it okay or let's not make a habit out of this let's not do this again and again food debris 
So debris, I think it's probably from French. We have a French viewer, Lolly Lolly, right now, watching right now. And um, but debris, the S is not pronounced. Okay, so debris, or some people say debris. Uh, debris is little broken pieces of something. It can be from a broken building or broken food, broken table, many different things. Debris, rocks. Now, in this case, food, we can also call it crumbs, right? Food crumbs. Now, if you're eating on the bed, so it blurs the line between uh, eating place and sleeping place, but also it can be uh, not so hygienic or hygienic. Um, so it can increase the risk of bacteria spreading. It's kind of gross when you think about it, right? So sitting upright as well um, to consume food can influence your digestion. So if you're sitting up when you're eating, that's better for your digestion of your food and your relaxed mindset could subject you to overeating. So maybe if you're in the bed, you are very relaxed. And if you're relaxed, you might eat more than you should. I think we've all been there, right? Just oh, so relaxed. One more donut, one more slice of pizza. So the advice here is ensure that your bedroom is a food-free zone. Oh dear. Your whole bedroom should be a food free zone. It's a disaster. To prevent, to preserve your sleep hygiene. Kind of makes sense. All right, the next one. And let me just catch up with the comments here. I'll just kind of catch up with the comments before we carry on with the article. But it's pretty interesting, right? Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, da -da -da -da. Muhammad only sleeps for four hours. Muhammad, please get go to sleep now. Please. I need eight hours though. I mostly only get seven. That's not bad though. Seven is pretty solid. I hate eating in bed, so no problem for me here. Okay, eating in bed. No way. Debris. Yes, a French word. Merci. Thank you, lovely lady. I thought it was. I thought it was. Okay, let's come back to the article then. So weekend lion. Now, what is a lion? We're pretty sure we've talked about this word before. Now, a lion is. Sounds like a lion, like roar, lion. But a lion, lion, is when you, us, usually at the weekend, maybe Sunday morning is a classic one, or Saturday morning, you wake up in the morning, but you don't get up straight away. You don't have to go to bed. Maybe you're still sleeping. Maybe you're just relaxing. You could, you could, oh, let me sleep a little bit more. Or, yeah, I'm going to have a lion. I'm just going to sleep in until a nice late time. So the, this sounds good. I think we all enjoy a good lion. But the problem is that, well, let's take a look. Working from home, which is what many people have been doing here, uh, sorry, been doing all around the world recently, um, makes it harder to distinguish, again, like, to distinguish the, the blurred lines between the days of the week. But to keep your sleep consistent, you need to get up and out. So basically, I mean, think about it. Week, weekdays and weekends. I mean, we all love the weekends. Today is Friday as I make this video. Weekends, you know, woo, it's good times. Uh, you think, ah, oh, the weekend, when I get to the weekend, I can have a lion, I can sleep in, I can relax, I don't have to get up early. And that's wonderful, right? Now, the problem is, when you think about it, weekends are uh, they're not exactly a natural thing. There's something that we just created as people. We decided, okay, we're going to have five days where we work and two days where we rest. There's nothing which is necessarily natural about that. It's just something that we have created artificially. And um, especially now as well, working at home, it get, gets even more confusing. Like, what day is it today? So um, it's, just, yeah. Have you ever had that? <laughs> especially recently? What day is it today? I don't know. Is it Saturday? Is it Tuesday? So you need to keep your sleep consistent, even at the weekends. Now, this is going to be a very difficult one for me because I enjoy a lion, especially at the weekend. So here's the advice. Have determination to wake up at the same time 
every day regardless of if it is the weekend or not let me know in the comments if you think that is possible or reasonable uh it's difficult so it does give you uh some uh uh solution here so on sundays which is i guess the main lion day on sundays have around an hour leeway leeway anything longer oh i'm not sure if you can see that here let me just move that down anything longer can disrupt your circadian rhythm what is that again circadian rhythm something to do with your heart i think circadian rhythm oh no that's to do with your sleep right what is circadian rhythm again let's just double check here i'm just drawing a blank circadian rhythm is okay circadian rhythm is the way that your body re uh, reacts to light and dark okay your biological clock i guess so uh the signal this okay on sundays you have an hour give yourself an hour leeway anything longer can disrupt your circadian rhythm this signals your brain that the morning wake up time doesn't change and it will begin to function properly so your brain will function better according to this article if you wake up at the same time every day okay or almost the same time every day if you wake up let's say every day at six o'clock or seven o'clock and then at the weekend you're thinking oh let me just lie in until 11 or 12 your body is going to get very confused so it would be better to wake up at a similar time even at the weekend which is difficult if you ask me but if you give yourself an it says here you could give yourself an hour leeway very nice word here leeway it means giving yourself a little bit of extra freedom a little bit of extra room if that makes sense um almost like a little bit of an excuse for something ah it's a tricky word to explain leeway let's say you um okay so in this case in this case if you wake up let's say 7 a.m every day on weekdays but then if you maybe at the weekend or on a Sunday say I'll wake up at 8 a.m. I'll give myself an extra hour so you give yourself some more leeway some more freedom to sleep but not too much in this case uh, but this word leeway can be used in lots of situations so when you just give a little bit more freedom to somebody let's say that there was a new employee at a, at a company and they are still not sure how everything works they're, they're not sure about maybe the exact the schedule and how everything is run at the company and you know it's natural they're going to make some mistakes so if somebody has been working there for a few years and they make these mistakes then it's not as forgivable but if you have just started working there maybe this week or a few days ago you should be given a little bit more leeway to make mistakes a little bit more freedom um leeway uh what else maybe uh, if you have a uh, uh some clothes which are not too tight they give your body a little bit more leeway freedom to move around i know it's they, those two examples sound very different but it's just that idea of giving yourself a little bit more freedom imagine you had some very tight clothes and you don't have much leeway you can't especially for jeans or something right you could feel very constricted but then if you had something a little bit looser ah you have a little bit more freedom so hopefully that makes sense it might seem odd to wake up at 9 a.m if you've had a restless night restless night means you couldn't sleep all night but a few weeks in after a few weeks so we can use the word in when something has started already so in this case with this live lesson hopefully it's not too long but uh we are i'm not sure exactly we are mm, i don't know maybe 30 minutes in i'm not sure <laughs> but 30 minutes in 20 minutes in you could be a week into your new job we are geez we are almost 
No, we are over eight months into this year. That's insane. That's crazy. It's August as we make this one. So it may seem odd to wake up eight at eight a.m. Hope you can see this article. Okay. Hope my face is not. Let me move my face a little bit. Let me move my face down there. There we go. I think my face is getting in the way of all, <laughs> all this stuff. Sorry. It might seem odd to wake up at 9 a.m., but if you, had, if, you had, if you had a restless night, but a few weeks in, your body will thank you. Your body will thank you, and you will fall asleep more regularly. So this is a nice expression, too. Your body will thank you. Now, obviously, it's can't literally say thank you, Lloyd, or thank you to you, <laughs> but your body will be happy. Your body will feel better if you get enough sleep and and regular sleep the next mistake is let me know if you make this one hot showers before bed oh dear to have a good night's sleep your body's core temperature should drop a little bit a little should drop a little bit around bedtime and let me know if you are guilty of this one taking a hot shower before bed it makes sense right you want to you want to just relax yourself take a hot shower but actually, it's not, it's not good. If you take a hot shower before bed, you run the risk of removing this signal. To run the risk <clears throat> of something or to run the risk of doing something means you are taking a risk. So it's the same uh, as a synonym to take a risk, to run a risk. Okay, a very common natural way to say this. You're running a risk, you're taking a risk uh, 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 of this possibly happening. So this bad thing happening. If you need a shower before bed, you should take one around 1.5 to two hours before and also avoid any high intensity workouts for around five hours before bedtime as this too, as this will too envelop, uh, elevate your core temperature. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Let me write that down in the comments. Counterintuitive at least to me, um, because you think, you think, you think that, oh, before I go to sleep, I should, um, I should be warm, I should maybe uh, give my body, <laughs> just making myself a little bit bigger here, I should have a warm, nice, you know, nice warm body before I go to sleep, I should, you know, tire myself out with exercise, and then I'm going to sleep like a baby, but apparently this is not good. If you want to exercise before you go to sleep, it should be five hours before bedtime. If you want to take a warm shower, it should be maybe two hours before bedtime, not a few minutes before. So that's quite a surprising one. The next one is lack of magnesium. I think, is this the last one? Oh no, there's a few more. Uh, okay, lack of magnesium in your diet can adversely impact your sleep. Adversely means impact something in a negative way. Magnesium is one of the most common minerals and is an ingredient in many foods. Okay, so we need it. And on a chemical level, magnesium activates neurotransmitters that are responsible for calming the body and mindset before bed. So we need our body to be calm before going to sleep, of course. You don't want to go to bed and be all anxious and all these things and you know, maybe as I was talking about going on the internet or your phone, computer, it's kind of your mind is all overstimulated, but it needs to be calm. I've heard people say that you should actually switch off your phone, put it in a different room before you go to bed. I haven't tried that yet, but I should. You should. We should. Not having enough magnesium in your body can cause sleep problems and even insomnia, right? Insomnia, not being able to sleep at all. First, ensure you're getting adequate amounts of magnesium from whole foods such as avocados. That's good. I, I, I like avocados. I eat a lot of avocados. And talk to a registered health professional about trying supplements. I guess drinking water too. Well, not for magnesium, but getting supplements. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The next one is trouble. Drinking alcohol. Oh dear. So alcohol is a sedative, right? It actually uh, can can put you to sleep, as we know. 
So whilst you might believe that you fall asleep quicker after a few glasses of wine, that's true, um, it won't be restful. Alcohol blocks REM, not the band REM. Um, what is REM again? REM is, it's a rapid, a rapid eye movement, rapid eye movement, rapid eye movement, sleep. When you're deep in your sleep, you have, I believe, REM, which is when you have, I think it's when you're dreaming. Somebody can double check that. But anyway, uh, it will, alcohol blocks it. So you cannot process the emotions that you need to. So even though alcohol will help you fall asleep, you're not going to have a good night's sleep. You're going to wake up in the night. You will be waking up in the night without realizing and feel slightly fragile. Fragile means like weak, and I feel quite weak. I uh, feel fragile. And hungover in the morning. Maybe groggy as well. If you can help it, if you can, basically, if you can help it, if you have the ability, try and drink earlier in the evening to give your body time to process it. I was watching an interview with Elon Musk recently, and um, he was talking about this. He was saying that, obviously, Elon Musk, one of the richest guys in the world, highly productive entrepreneur, and he was talking about how um, he uh, he makes sure that he never drinks. He drinks, but he doesn't drink. I think it's a few hours. Drink or eat anything a few hours before sleeping is very important to get a good night's sleep. I also saw an interview with Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, also one of the richest guys in the world, and he said how important sleep is for him. He makes he makes it a priority to get, I think he said eight hours of sleep, which is kind of funny because you think, you know, these CEOs, you think they never sleep, they're just awake all the time, but they also know how important sleep is, which should tell you something. I think this is the last one. Bright lights, bright lights. Exposure to bright lights impacts the brain's ability to produce melatonin as it resembles daytime. So again, it's this similar theme of your brain being confused. Your brain is thinking, is it daytime now? So if you fall, if you sleep with the light on, right? Or maybe you are in a country where it gets light very early in the morning, especially in summertime, right? In many countries, the sun can rise uh, five o'clock, six o'clock, and you should still be sleeping at that time. Um, melatonin is the sleep hormone that encourages us to sleep. And we need to develop this. Uh, we need to, uh, yes. <laughs> so ensure you have dimmed light fixtures in your bedroom and avoid using bright overhead lights when it's close to bedtime. So if you're in bed and you have the lights on, but the light is really bright, that's not good. Um, so try to get more dim lights. Of course, you you want to have the lights on so you can see, and, but you want your brain to start to get ready for sleep. So dim lights. Maybe dimmable lights would be good too. You know those lights where you can actually make it brighter or more dim. If your window treatments are attracting daylight, you, I've never heard that before. Your window treatments, I guess it means your curtains, your, yeah. Invest in blackout blinds. So if you have blinds on your uh, window, but maybe the, the light still comes through, you need it would be better to get um, opaque ones, right? Black uh, blinds or curtains where the light cannot come through. So even if the sun comes up early, you can still sleep soundly uh, and your brain will still think that it's nighttime and you'll get a proper night's sleep. So yeah, that is it. Another thing that I would mention, which is kind of similar to this, is, um, what is it called again? There is, uh, I don't know if you have this option on your phone, but there's this feature, which I have activated on my phone, where, you know, the phone, you have this blue light, this blue light, which comes out of your phone. And apparently this 
prevents you from sleeping well. So there's a setting where you can switch off this blue light after a certain time. So for me, when the clock strikes 11 p.m., my phone suddenly becomes a bit dimmer and this blue light um, goes off and uh, come, comes on again at 7 o'clock in the morning. Now, I don't know how effective this is in terms of helping your sleep, but apparently there's some science behind it and maybe you have activated this feature on your phone. If you haven't, maybe look into it. Could be could be useful for you, especially if you are someone who uses your phone uh, at night time, which I think is most people at this point. So any last comments before we go? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Jonathan says, mm, sure, maybe the extra hot dilate and peripheral vessels. Jonathan's a doctor, by the way. Uh, and as compensation, your heart will beat faster. Is a sim stimulation of the sympathetic system, indeed. But I'm guessing. Okay, that was pretty complicated. But um, yeah, raising your heart level definitely not a good thing. I gave myself a some leeway I'd rather say leeway is not countable it's uncountable I gave myself some leeway to skip some lectures okay 24 hour cycle that's the cardi circadian rhythm alrighty well thank you for watching everybody and let me know in the comments which one which mistakes do you make out of these and which one do you think you are most which one were you most surprised about from this article I would say that I was quite surprised about um, not exercising or the warm shower before bed. That kind of seemed counterintuitive, as I mentioned. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below um, if you're watching in the replay. And just before we finish, quickly review some of the vocabulary. So we had rejuvenated, right, to feel energetic again. Drift off to sleep. Fresh faced, <laughs> bright and fresh faced, groggy, I feel a bit groggy, oh, I'm a bit dizzy, a bit groggy, oh, what time do we, what time do we get home from the bar last night? Don't make a habit out of that, okay, don't, I know, I'll forgive you this time, but don't make a habit out of this, okay? We need to be careful not to blur the lines between these two things. Debris, food debris, oh, that's pretty gross. Don't let the food debris or crumbs infest your bed. Another thing is the ants, ants or other creatures might decide to visit your bed as well. Have leeway, give yourself leeway, give yourself a little bit of extra freedom, a little bit of extra time, or uh, forgiveness for something. Run the risk, take the risk of something happening. Run the risk, yeah, it's always for something negative feel fragile, feel very weak. Oh, and there's one more word I wanted to mention as well. It's not in this article, but it came to mind. So if you are, you know, when you're feeling so sleepy and you just want to take a nap and just take a nap just for a few hours, and then obviously at nighttime, you're going to find it difficult to sleep. So in that situation, when you're feeling so sleepy, it's better just to power through, to keep, just to get through that moment. And then at nighttime, you will have a better night's sleep. So to push through when things are difficult, to power through. Um, imagine you are exercising, you're running, and you're all, you know, I want to give up. And you're like, okay, I just need to run for five more minutes. Just power through, push through to the end. I don't know why that just that word just came to mind. So I thought I would add it, but I would add it. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Always a pleasure to have you here. And make sure you get a good night's sleep tonight okay talk to you all again very very soon sweet dreams